If you'll turn with me to Psalms, chapters 116, verse 13. Psalms, chapter 116, verse 13. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Psalms 116, verse 13 reads, I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. And may the Lord place a blessing on the reading of his word today. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be here today. And because of our devotional this morning, we thank you that this is an anniversary date, Lord. That October 1st, a young man named this church, Seventh-day Adventist. Two of the most important things that we believe is the Sabbath still exists and that Jesus is coming soon. So we thank you for all this. I ask a blessing upon the sermon with Beth and myself that you will help me to understand and to know what to say and that you will bless her. Bless each one that's in this church as they listen to this for it's about Jesus, the most important thing we could preach about. So we thank you for all this. We ask for your blessing in each and every life here, Lord. One, no matter what has happened to us, that you will bless us and have us ready for your soon coming. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In the southern Atlantic, there was a ship sailing along to deliver. It was a freight liner or whatever you'd call it, steam steamboat. And uh, a storm came up, a bad storm, the worst they'd ever seen. And this storm lasted three days. And they couldn't control the boat because it ruined the steering. And they didn't know what to do. And finally, one of the men from lower, below, below deck came up and says, we have broke something in the boat, and the water is pouring in. And the captain says, start the pumps. They started the pumps. The pumps could not keep up with the amount of water coming in the boat. They said, we're going to sink, Captain. We need to do something. So he said, let's lower all the lifeboats. And as they went up to look at the lifeboats, the lifeboats were ruined, all but one. And they took the one that wasn't ruined, and they put it overboard, and they lowered it to the water. And then they lowered the rope ladder. And one by one, they went down the rope ladder and got in that boat as the big boat was sinking sinking inch by inch, foot by foot. And the captain got all of the men in the ship. And it was his turn. And they had room for one more in that boat. That boat was going to be full. They had just enough inches for him to come down that ladder and crawl in that boat. And suddenly, as the, as the captain was ready to abandon the ship, he heard something. He heard footsteps. And along the deck came a stowaway, a young boy. He was dressed terrible. He had stowed away. He had been there for the whole trip, not eaten anything. But here he came because he heard the boat was sinking. And there was one room left in that boat, that little boat. And he told that young man, get over the side, go down the rope ladder and get in the boat. And he did. And the men looked up and they said, Captain, for you, for you, come down and get in with us. We'll do something to get you in this boat. And he said, if I get in that boat, we'll all die. No, I want you to shove off now. And they shoved away from the big ship with the captain still on the big boat. And they got far enough away that when the boat sank, it didn't affect the little boat. And for two days, for two days, that boat just floated in the Atlantic. And suddenly a great big ship came and it rescued all of them. But the captain gave his life because of a stowaway. Brothers and sisters, that's the story of the Bible. And when this young man was in town and still alive, 
People would ask him what he did for a living. And before he'd say, he'd just tell them, I'm glad I'm alive. I was on a ship that sank. And if it wasn't for the captain, I'd have died. In fact, maybe all of us would have died. And out of his coat, he would pull a picture of the captain. And he would show everyone the person that saved his life. Isn't that a great story? Beth is going to continue. All right, so the communion service reminds us in a vivid and unique way of the one who gave his life for us. The apostle writes concerning the Lord's Supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. The passage teaches us several things about the communion cup. We notice that it is a cup of thanksgiving. By taking part in the Lord's Supper, we show our gratitude and express our thanks to our Savior for what he has done for us. It's also a cup of salvation. Jesus declared, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Through his blood represented by the cup, you and I are forgiven of our sins. We stand before God pardoned. With the sentence of eternal death upon us now removed, we receive the promise and gift of salvation. Therefore we say with the psalmist, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. It is the cup of remembrance. Says our Lord, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. We human beings forget so easily. We need something to remember by. Even in our secular world, um, we erect monuments to help us remember. Um, there's the Minuteman Monument in Concord, Massachusetts, and also the Lincoln Memorial in the nation's capital. The Lord's Supper is a living memorial of what Jesus did for us on Calvary's cross. It's also the cup of blessing. Paul writes, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? When we assemble for communion, the Lord blesses us abundantly. It's also the cup of obedience for every believer in Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 26, verse 27, drink ye all of it. As we pointed out earlier, the original original language says, drink of it all of you. The good speed version declares you must all drink from it. You see, we ought never to miss communion except in case of illness or emergency. It is one of his blessed commands. He says, do this in remembrance of me. If you believe that Jesus shed his blood on the cross for you, if you love the Lord and have accepted him as your savior, if you discern the meaning of the cup and the bread, then you should definitely take the Lord's Supper. All of you drink it. The communion vessel is the cup of thanksgiving, salvation, remembrance, blessing, and obedience for every believer in Jesus. Let us remember that when believers assemble to celebrate the ordinances, messengers unseen by human eyes join us. Heavenly angels are present. Christ by his Holy Spirit is there to set the seal to his own ordinance, to meet with his people. As we come in faith, looking unto him, he gives us his abundant blessing and the assurance of his salvation. So at this time, we will part and go to foot washing. Thank each one of you for coming, and uh, I believe in communion. I believe it's one of the most important services we have during the year, and we have it three times, four times. We have it once a quarter, and I just felt that with the new lesson being on uh, communion that we're going to study on Wednesday night, this, this would be a good Sabbath to have communion. So if we have it today and then have it somewhere in the very beginning of the year, it will be a good way to uh, commence towards the last three months and uh,
begin the year. So I hope communion is important to you. And I hope you understand it. And if there's more understanding you'd like to have, please come on Wednesday night. Uh, so far we've given out all the books we ordered and Marianne ordered six more. So uh, there's no problem in getting books. And uh, communion is a very important time in which Jesus asks us to partake of his body and blood. I'm going to have Roger read about the wine and have the prayer. Oh, the bread, sorry. <laughs> Roger's going to read about the bread out of the Bible. And then I'm going to ask Will to read about the, the wine and then have them ask the blessing upon them. And uh, the one thing I ask is that you pray for the bread and that you ask a blessing upon the wine. Every now and then I do communion and somebody starts praying for everybody at church. But uh, this is a time to ask God to bless these two symbols that when we partake of them, it's as though we're eating his body and drinking his blood to have him in our life. There's two things you re really need. One, I believe, is communion. And the other is baptism. Baptism is when you commit yourself to Jesus. And communion is when you commit Jesus to yourself. So those two things are very, very important to me, both as a minister and as a member. And I believe if you haven't been baptized, you should be. And if you don't come to communion, if you, if you know of people who don't, that you suggest to them that they come because it's very, very valuable. Jesus says, partake of this until I come. So that's what we should do. Roger's going to read. If you want to kneel, you can. If you want to remain seated, that's fine too. From 1 Corinthians chapter 11 starting with verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on that same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And, when he, and then he gave thanks. He broke it and he said, Take, eat of this, this is my body, is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. If you'll bow your heads with me, we'll have prayer over this. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you have sacrificed your body for us. And Lord, as we take of the bread today, that we take of your body that you sacrifice for our sins, that we shall have eternal life in you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Richie? Uh, Richie's thinking that my accident wasn't worse. It couldn't be worse. Uh, the only reason that I and Marianne are alive, according to the nurses, the doctors, okay, is I believe because of your prayers. They believe because of our health. And we thank God for that because of our diet. So uh, everyone has told us that we're a walking, talking miracle. And uh, I believe that. I believe we wouldn't have been here except for your prayers and for dedication and for your love. So I want to thank each one of you for all you've done for Mary Ann and I as far as prayer and dedication and everything the nurses the doctors and everyone and I'm only saying this because Richie started it
they all said that, uh, especially me, I'm a walking, talking miracle, that I should have been dead. And I thank each of you for prayers, for your concern, and for your love. We just thank you for all that. And we ask God's blessing on the rest of our life. Someone at the hospital told me, maybe it's because you're a pastor, but God has work for you to do. And that's the greatest thing I could ever possibly hear because I'd like to do everything I can for him. And I hope you do too. During that supper, Jesus gave them bread, and he said, Take and eat it, for this is my body. My prayer is that as you eat this bread and drink this wine, that you're asking Jesus to be a part of you. I can help, I cannot help but thinking of Bible texts, because I haven't been able to read yet. And Paul says, and maybe you and I could feel this way when we leave here, it's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. Will's going to have the blessing for the wine. Reading again from Corinthians, where Paul says, in the same manner, He also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we pause this Sabbath morning, this communion service, we look back 2,000 years, Father, to the time when you did this and set the example for us. And Lord, like you, we too are looking forward to that time in the kingdom when we can do it together. We pray that each one of us gathered here today will be there without the loss of one is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. If anyone else has a testimony, now would be a time where you could stand up and maybe, okay? Anyone else have anything you'd like to share with us?
David? surprise you today and tell you that before we drink this, I've asked Beth to have a, huh? Afterward? Okay. Uh, I've just had my mind changed. <laughs> and uh, I love my wife and I love Jesus. Jesus said, take ye and drink ye all of it, for this is my blood. Now? Yes, okay. I'd like you to listen to this song. I picked this special for communion. Uh, I was blessed. Mary Ann sat at our piano and played about five or six songs. And this one just kept ringing in my ear as I thought about communion. And I asked Beth if she would sing this and Mary Ann would play it. But listen to the very last sentence as you go through this song.
just for love of me, Jesus. God's most precious treasure lavished on me. Part of that song is our personal request, asking God to let us be poured out and used up for him. And I just pray that that's in your heart. Since my accident, I have been probably closer to the Lord than I ever thought I was before. I enjoyed reading. I enjoyed writing sermons. I enjoyed doing evangelism. I enjoyed door-to-door Bible studies. But since my accident, with my sight and my leg and my jaw and everything else, God has taught me that we're only here but because of him. If Satan had his way, he would destroy us. But it's through your prayers and God that Marianne and I are here today. And I'm thankful I'm alive. And I'm thankful I can still be used. And I want to be broken and spilled out for Jesus. And I pray that you do too. So may God bless you this Sabbath. As you've come to communion, that you leave here with a special part, a growth in you of Jesus. And that you want to do everything you can for him. And for your neighbors to find out about Jesus and to be saved in the very end. May God bless each and every one of you. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for communion. And Lord, if there's a time where communion has meant anything to me, in years gone by, I would say I loved you. But in what's happened to me and to Mary Ann, I say that the love has grown so much because I've had time just to sit and think. And as I get to communion and realize what you did for us, even though you didn't sin, you were willing to give your life. Lord, what is it that we couldn't give our life for you to? So help each one in this room to realize the valuable lesson of communion in which we come each time that we do it. And we ask for you through this wine, through this grape juice, through this bread, We ask that symbolically we ask you to live in us and that we can be like Paul. Lord, that verse means so much to me and it seems like the best communion verse there is. It's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. May you live in each and every one of us here and as we were told in the testimonies, may we all be ready for Jesus to come and not one of us missing in heaven. Jesus says he won't partake of this again until heaven. So what a time for him to pass out grape juice and have us drink, only this time in celebration of all that's happened and the fact that we're in heaven. Lord God, bless us as only you can, and we thank you for everything you give us in church whether it be a sermon or a children's story or special music or communion. We just thank you for each and every one and what it can mean to us if we open our hearts to you. We thank you for this in Jesus' precious name.
Amen. Let's stand together for our closing song. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sign. Angels descending, ring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior. All the day long, perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Sing the dismiss song. They all left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Miss us, Lord, with blessing we pray. As from thy worship we go our ways. Guide in life's calm all through the day save in thy kingdom thine be the praise